Hello everyone. Welcome to Vigyan Bharat. This is our first lecture on the real analysis course. And in this, today I'm going to discuss the complete elementary set theory. So we just have one, I need just one thing from you that you need to watch the video till the end. And today we're going to learning a lot that I have just written here. A quick glimpse of so many interesting things and topic coming your way today and some exercises, cool exercises in that. So let's begin. Okay. So here, if you see in the very starting, I have just mentioned some of the standard sets, which often we encounter whenever we study whether real analysis or in particular, suppose say when we study linear algebra, then often in the different disciplines of mathematics, these sets will come into picture. So the first set is set of natural number. This is the set of naturals or the positive integers. The second set is the set of integers. This is the set of rationals. That is all those fractions of the form P by Q where P and Q are integers and Q is not zero. So all these, just let me import this one. Yeah. The set, this is very important in context of real analysis. This and this, these two sets are very important for us. This is the set of real numbers. And finally, when we'll be moving to some other courses like complex analysis, then this set will come into the picture. This bold C is called the set of complex numbers. Okay. Let's move ahead now. Now let's discuss some particular types of sets, particular types of sets. So what I did for this, I choose two numbers A and B, which are coming from the set, the set of real number. It means they belong to, belongs to the set of real number. The first set, which is nothing but a closed interval, which consists of all those points, which lies between A and B, and of course, including them both. Here, if you see this is inclusion in equality. So collection of all those X belong to the set of real numbers is that X satisfies this property. Now I left it to you to fill these three in terms of the uh, set theoretic notation. You can fill it yourself. Just one remark uh, before moving ahead that there are two uh, two kind of broadly there are two types of set i would say uh, one is closed the first is the closed interval the first is the closed interval this last is an open interval these are semi closed and semi open okay let's move ahead now this is a very uh, easy and uh, useful useful topic or useful. this empty set, the notion of empty set. Empty set basically means a set which does not contain any element. So these two are its standard notation to denote an empty set. This is also called as phi, the Greek letter or this curly braces, which does not contain any element inside. So this is a set which again will be very useful to us. Okay, let's move ahead now. Singleton set. Now, what is a singleton set? A, a set is said to be singleton if it contains exactly one element. So here is an example. This is a set which contains this element. The small a is an element of this set. Now, this is a question to you, which I expect you to answer. Uh, is the set containing this element phi is same as is equal to, is empty set. Now the question is, is the this set is same as the empty set? I asked you to pause the video and try to think over this and answer this. I hope you have given a pause to it and you have thought about it. 
whatever you you think just answer me in the comment section let's move ahead now this is a very important concept in context of set theory venn diagrams so these the concept of venn diagram was given by an english mathematician john venn in 1881 now here this capital bold face u denotes the universal set what it means basically it we are considering all elements the set u comprise of all elements under consideration under consideration whatever in whatever context you are saying suppose say let me choose a particular example for this if i'm if i am saying that uh, my universe is set comprise of uh, i'm talking of the english alphabets then my universal set u is the set of all those 26 in english alphabets starting from a and going till z okay so you can the set u may vary uh, depending on the example given uh, this is basically the exercise which i asked which i just explained now the next very important two notions the first one is of subset and the second is a superset so suppose we have two sets a and b a and b are two sets which we have then a is a subset of b is denoted by this notation and b is a superset of a is denoted by this this is the notation for superset in terms of quantifiers or in terms of language of mathematics what it means basically when we say that a is a subset of b a if this holds if this holds that is a is a subset of b now this is again a very important mathematical i would say symbol which stands for if and only if if and only if or some authors also denote write it i double f in short if so what it means basically that both the conditions are satisfy the necessary and the sufficient part if in on the necessary we assume that a is a subset of b then this implies that for every x belong to the set a this implies x is also an element of the set b whereas on the other way around we say that if for every x belongs to a it implies that x is also a member of the set b then in that case we say that a is a subset the set a is a subset of the set b okay so this is in terms of quantifiers now here is an good and easy exercise uh, which you should ask yourself if you want to prove that some subset that that's a set a is not a subset of the set b i ask you to prove that a set a is not a subset of a set b then what would be your approach if you use this definition of in terms of quantifiers that uh, what i am asking you is basically we want to show a negation of the previous one so what what been approach of this so i ask you to again pause the video and try to think over it once before moving ahead i hope again you have given a thought to it so now it's very easy what do you want to prove the supposed of this if we are able to find at least one element one element in the uh, set a Find a single element in the set A which is not a member of the set B. Then we say that A is A is a subset of the set B. This is your approach to do this. Now there are some good exercises for you here again. What it says that suppose we have set A which consists of all those integers such that this square is strictly less than ten. You have to collect all those integers whose squares are strictly less than ten. the set b is the set of all non negative integers now again here is a term which we should understand first what is the meaning of non negative non negative in general means anything which is greater than or equal to 0 so in context of this example we are saying that the set b is a set of all non negative integers that is b b is the set of non negative integers that is integers starting from 0 1 2 and so on so this is the set b now you have to first now i'm asking you this question whether a is a subset of b again i ask you to pause the video try to 
think yourself and then answer me in the comment box i just answer you you have to find justify the reason why it's so the answer is no you have to justify me in the comments comment box i just give you in a hint that try to find an element in the set a which is not in the set b okay now these three important operations which we perform whenever we have some at least two sets we have then we can perform these three operations with them so the first operation is union the first operation is union whenever i have two sets a and b and now i want to take the union of these two so the result is again a set if i perform the operation the answer is again a set so now a union b how it is defined a union b is the collection of all those elements x such that this colon stands for such that such that x is a member of the set a or x is member of the set b or like because in the between here is or so it might also happen that x might belong to both of them okay in the definition it's already included you have to understand it now i ask you let me define it. okay what is the meaning of intersection when you want to perform this operation now i'm collecting all those x all those elements we satisfy this property that x is a member of the set a and x is a member of the set b also x is a member of both the sets so intersection contains only those element which belongs to both the sets okay now here is some another notation for intersection this is ab if i write a intersection b or ab these are two same notations for denoting the intersection okay let's move it now this is a very important operation a very useful operation which is called complement now whenever i am taking complement i am taking the complement of one set with respect to another so here how i am going to read this complement of the set b relative to the set a so what it means basically you are collecting all those x such that x belongs to b and x does not belongs to a complement means you are trying to exclude all those elements whatever the set you are writing after this operation this is the operation so whatever the set here the set is a so you are excluding all those elements from the set a and you are trying to collect all those elements which are there in the b so and those all those elements satisfy these properties simultaneously okay so now some very good uh, exercise for you it's very easy exercise i would say if you have understood properly all those three operations above just pause the video and try to just go through these all three boxes and try to fill it yourself first i hope again uh, you have given a pause to it so a intersection b if i look over all these three uh, boxes which are nothing a representation of two sets in terms of bad diagrams and there are we are trying to find out the correct operation which is the shaded part uh, between these in these bad diagrams so a intersection b is by definition the collection of all those elements which are common to both a and b so if you see here in the box one uh here are some elements here which are not in b so certainly this is not the intersection part if i look over here and see those elements then these elements belong to this set this is the set a and these element also are the set b so the answer to the first is box 2 box 2 represent the intersection of a and b now in the second uh, exercise you have to answer me the complement of b with respect to a which is also written as this a intersection b complement so again i left both these to you and fill the, uh, the boxes in the comment box try to answer me now this is a very useful notion disjoint sets two sets a and b are said to be disjoint if their intersection equals the empty set that is they don't have any element in common 
then such and signs are said to be disjoint. Okay. Now, these two are very important laws, very important and useful laws given by De Morgan, which relates the operation union, intersection and complement simultaneously. So these laws will be going to will be using further when we will be going to do some good interesting problems. So try to see the laws, what they say. The first, this is the first one and this is the second one. Okay. The first one says that if you have, if you take the union of A and B and take the complement. Now when I am taking the complement, this I am taking with respect to the universal set. Try to understand this one. With respect to the universal set. whatever it, uh, it is in, in, in the context given to you at, at the time whenever you are using this operation. So A union B complement is same as you, you what you do, you take the complement of the set A, you take the complement of set B and take their intersection. So it is same as doing this. Now the second law is the complement of the intersection of two sets, complement of the intersection of two sets is given by the union of their individual complements. What I said, try to understand it again, uh, listen it carefully. The complement of two sets A and B, the complement of the intersection basically. The complement, if you take the intersection of A and B and you want to find its complement, then it is same as what you do, you take the complement of A, you take the complement of the set B and then you take the union. So this was the second De Morgan law. Now, these two I left you to prove very, if you want to generalize the De Morgan law for three sets. So these you should do yourself. And before uh, concluding today's lecture, here are some two very easy and useful exercises for you. The first exercise says that if A and B are sets, then you have to show that A is a subset of B, if and only if intersection B equals the set A. So try to prove this. And also try to think this in terms of uh, Venn diagram. Try to think it. You will uh, be able to easily understand it. The second exercise is, this is again a very important op operation like the union intersection complement. So this operation of symmetric difference. The operation is symmetric difference here. Now, the symmetric difference, how it is defined over two sets A and B is suppose say it is equal to some set D and now the symmetric difference of set A and set B is the collection of all those elements that belong to either the set A or in the set B, but not both. This is very important. Here you are collecting all those elements which are either in the set A or in the set B, but not, not belong to the both the sets. So try to see the difference here and what we define in case of the union. Okay. Sim on the similar lines, when we draw those Venn diagrams for those operations of union intersection complement. So here again, the first step is very easy and important that you should represent the set D, which you find above with the help of a Venn diagram. The second exercise is that if you will find uh, that the D will be equal to this one. And there's another way of writing the set D that is the symmetric difference of A and B like this. And before uh, concluding, just an important um, useful information for you. If you have any queries wherever in these exercises, then you can ask me in the drop those queries, drop your solutions in the Telegram group. So I hope. Uh, you find this video to be useful and, and if you have any queries whatsoever throughout this lecture then drop me in the comment box. So that's all for today's lecture and uh, we'll be moving ahead now to the further in our real analysis course. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much.